Good day, learners. This is your accounting teacher, Sir AJ, and welcome back to my channel. So for today, we will be talking about a financial accounting topic, and this is one of the first topics that are discussed in financial accounting. So for today, we will be talking about cash and cash equivalents. So if you want to learn how to account for cash and cash equivalents, this video is for you. So as what I have said earlier, we will be talking about cash and cash equivalents today. And we will be talking about how to account for cash and cash equivalents. So we will start with cash. So accordingly, the definition of cash is it is a financial asset which includes money or its equivalent that is readily available for unrestricted use. So take note that number one, it is a financial asset. And number two, it is readily available and it is unrestricted. So once it is restricted or it is not readily available for use, then it cannot be considered as cash. How do we measure cash? In the financial statements, we measure it at face value or the face amount. If it is denominated in foreign currency, then we translate the amount using the closing rate at the end of the year. But we use the face value or the face amount of the cash. Some examples of cash are this. Number one, cash on hand. These are your mga bills and coins. Meron din tayong cash in bank. Ito yung mga nakadeposit sa banko. We also have demand deposits, meaning you deposited in the bank and you can uh, demand for it for use. No? Then next, we have checks that may be encashed immediately. So pag hindi mo na encash yung check, eh, then hindi siya pwedeng maging cash. Cash fund set aside for use in current operations. Take note of the operative term, current operations. For example, nag-set aside ka ng fund for salaries and wages, then kasalin sa cash kasi current operations. But if it is a sinking fund, for example, then it is not considered as cash kasi hindi po siya for current operations. Now, what happens if there is bank overdraft. Ano ibig sabihin ng bank overdraft? You withdrew or you issued check more than what you have in the bank. So, mas mas marami yung na-withdraw mo kesa dun sa pera mo sa um, banko. So, ang tinatawag natin dun ay overdraft. Pag nagkataon na merong bank overdraft, you will not classify it as cash but you should classify it as a current liability kasi this time meron kang utang sa banko and it should not be offset against the cash balance so hindi mo siya pwedeng i-deduct sa cash balance mo but it is separately recorded as current liability the exception is kapag kunwari you have two or more accounts in the same bank and one of them is a negative balance, then you can offset. So for example, meron kang account number 1, you have 100,000 and then account number 2, meron kang negative 20,000. In that case, you do not recognize it as a liability but i-offset mo na lang sila since the same yung bank at i-offset mo magiging 80,000 yung balance mo sa bank na yun. How about if it is a compensating balance? Ibig sabihin, merong mga required na minimum balance no, ang ating bank deposits. If it is not legally restricted, ibig sabihin, you can still withdraw it, it still forms part of the cash balance. But if it is legally restricted, so pag ang compensating balance ay legally restricted, then hindi siya included sa cash kasi hindi siya readily available for use. What if yung mga post-dated checks? So nag-issue ka ng cheque or nakatanggap ka ng cheque that you received now pero yung date sa check, later date pa. Ang tawag dun ay post-dated checks. Kapag ikaw yung issuer ng check, so ikaw dapat yung nag-minus sa cash, no? So, kasi nag-issue ka ng check, so ima-minus mo yun sa cash. But, dahil post-dated pa siya, hindi pa siya ma-e-encash kung kanino mo man binigay yung check. So, 
if you are the issuer, then it is still included in cash. Hindi mo pa siya i-deduct. But, if you are the recipient of the check, hindi mo siya i-co-consider na cash kasi hindi mo pa siya mako-convert sa cash, yung check na yun. Unless, darating na yung date ng post-dated check. How about if it is a undelivered check? So, nag-issue ka na ng check, nagsulat ka na ng check, pero hindi mo pa na-deliver doon sa recipient. If you are the issuer of the check, again, still included siya sa cash kasi yung recipient, hindi niya pa naman ma e cash kasi hindi mo pa din deliver sa kanya. Tulad ng post-dated check, ang rule natin is kapag hindi siya readily available for encashment, then hindi pa siya cash. So, dahil dito, hindi mo pa siya i kung ikaw ang issuer, you still include it in cash. If you are the recipient naman, dahil hindi mo pa nare-receive kasi it was not delivered yet, then it is not part of cash. The third issue sa mga check eh, is yung mga stale checks. Ito yung mga hindi mo na encash for quite some time. Ang rule natin dito sa Philippines, normally 6 months. Kapag hindi mo pa na encash ng 6 months, Ibig sabihin, stale na yung cheque. Eh. Kailangan mo nang humingi ng bagong check. If you are the issuer of check, tapos yung check ay stale, then you still include it in cash because hindi na yun ma-e-encash nung recipient. Dapat bigyan mo siya ng bagong check. Eh. So, i-include mo pa rin siya sa cash. But, if you are the recipient of the check, then hindi siya part ng cash kasi nga, hindi mo ma-e-encash. So, that's... For cash, the second part of this tutorial is cash equivalents. So, ano naman tong mga cash equivalents? Accordingly, yung definition ng cash equivalents is these are short-term, take note, highly liquid investments that are readily convertible to known amounts of cash and which are subject to an insignificant risk of changes in value. So, tatlong terms ang kailangan nating tandaan. Short-term sila, Highly liquid, ibig sabihin mabilis i-convert to cash, and insignificant yung risk. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya subject to high risk, no? sobrang baba ng risk. Normally, ang mga investments na sobrang baba ang risk is yung mga investments with the government, government instruments. Kasi nga, sure ka na babalik yung investment mo. Okay. So, short-term, highly liquid, and insignificant yung risk. Um, to know if part ba ng cash equivalent, yung isang investment, meron tayong tinatawag na 3-month rule. Ito lang yung tandaan ninyo para maging part siya ng cash equivalents. Yung date of purchase or when you purchase the instrument is 3 months from the maturity date. So, eto lang yung dalawang dates na kailangan yung tandaan. Tingnan nyo lang kung kailan binili at kung kailan magmamature yung instrument. Kapag ang pagitan ng dalawang yan ay 3 months, then pasok yan sa definition ng cash equivalents. How do we measure cash equivalents? Like cash, they are also measured at face value or face amount. So, these are some examples of pwedeng pumasok sa cash equivalents. Meron tayong 3-month treasury bill. Meron tayong 90-day money market instrument. So, kung mapapansin nyo, lahat sila 3 months. 3-month time deposits. Yan. So, these are some examples of um, cash equivalents. So, we have already discussed cash and we also discussed cash equivalents. Now, we have some issues or considerations as to cash equivalents. How about equity investments? Or ibig sabihin, bumili ka ng shares of stocks or bumili ka ng um, stocks, equity instruments ng ibang company. Nag-invest ka sa equity. The general rule is they are excluded from cash equivalent. So, in the first place, pag equity investment yan, hindi talaga sila pwedeng maging cash equivalents because they don't have any maturity date. At saka, hindi sila insignificant risk. no? So, they are excluded from cash equivalent. So, pag may nabasa kayong equity investments, hindi sila kasali sa cash equivalents. Ang exception dyan is kapag ang equity investment mo ay isang redeemable preference share. Ano ba tong redeemable preference share? Bumili ka ng preference share, pero 
redeemable siya. Ibig sabihin, nasa sayo yung control kung pwede mong i-redeem or not. Then, pag ikaw yung may control as an investor, kung kailan mo gustong kunin na ulit yung iyong investment, then para doon sa nag-issue ng share, doon sa kabilang person sa transaction, hindi niya yun i-record as equity, but i-record niya yun as a liability. So, dahil doon, hindi ito Um, technically equity investment kasi meron siyang redemption date meron siyang parang up to what date mo siya pwedeng um, bawiin or pwedeng i-redeem so if you purchased it 3 months from its redemption date tapos redeemable preference share yan pwede yan maging part ng cash equivalent so yun lang po ang only exception so now let's practice what we learned So, for example, on December 31, 2020, Digi Company has the following composition of its cash and cash equivalents. We have demand deposit, 1,500,000. Certificate of deposit, 30 days, 500,000. NSF check of customer, ibig sabihin ng NSF, not sufficient funds. Ibig sabihin, nagbigay siya ng check sa'yo tapos wala naman palang pera yung kanyang account, 20,000 pesos. Money market placement, due date, June 30, 2021. Take note of the due date, that's June 30, 2021. 1 million pesos. Savings deposit in closed bank, 50,000. IOU from an employee, IOU meaning a receivable from an employee, 30,000. Petty cash fund, 10,000. Customer's check, dated January 31, 2021. So this is a post-dated check, 60,000. Customer's check, outstanding for 18 months. Ibig sabihin, stale to kasi hindi pa siya na encash until now, 30,000. Additional information. Check of 100,000 in payment of accounts payable was recorded on December 31, 2020. So, nag-record ka na ng debit, accounts payable, credit cash. Binawasan mo na yung cash. But, mailed to creditors on January 15, 2021. So, this was an undelivered check. Check of 50,000 dated January 31, 2021, post-dated. In payment of accounts payable was not recorded and mailed December 31, 2020. The company uses the calendar year. The cash receipts journal was held open until January 15, 2021, during which time 200,000 was collected and recorded on December 31, 2020. So, nakapag-collect ka pa doon ng 200,000 sa January 15, pero na-record siya as of December 31. So, let's answer. Doon muna tayo sa listahan ng mga cash and cash equivalent accounts. So, ang question dito is how much cash and cash equivalents should be shown on the December 31, 2020 balance sheet. So, let's start with the list of items. The demand deposit of 1,500,000 is included in cash because it's demand deposit, so readily available. Certificate of deposit 30 days, 500,000 also included. NSF check, so walang funds yung check ng customer, so parang wala ka rin pera, no? so the 20,000 NSF check is excluded. Money market placement, the due date is June 30, 2021. Although money market placement, to, pwede sana siya maging cash equivalent. Pero dahil December 31, 2020 ngayon, and it's 6 months bago mag June 30, then hindi siya cash equivalent. no? Kasi 3 month rule. So this is excluded. So saan may record ang money market placement? I-record mo siya as... investment, short-term investment. Yung NSF check, i-record mo siya as accounts receivable. Kasi, uh, may utang pa yung customer sa'yo unless lagyan niya ng pera yung bank account niya. Savings deposit in a closed bank, 50,000 is also excluded. Since it is a closed bank, hindi siya readily available for use. IOU from an employee is a receivable, so that's excluded. 
Petty Cash Fund, it is a fund. So, pwede yun for current operations. Para saan ba ang petty cash? Para yan sa mga small expenses. Or yung mga expenses na pang pamasahe, pang gas, mga ganun. So, that's included. The customer's check dated January 31. Sabi ko nga, post-dated check ito. Then, dahil customer's check to, you are the recipient. Pwede mo na bang i-consider na cash to? Hindi pa kasi post-dated siya, January 31. So, that's excluded. So, ikaw ang recipient dito. Hindi ikaw yung issuer ng check. Customer's check, outstanding for 18 months. This is a stale check. Again, ikaw na naman yung recipient. Pwede mo bang ma-encash yan? Hindi na. So, that's excluded also. Undelivered check but recorded on December 31. So, this is the additional information. Sabi, nung December 31, nag-record ka na ng debit accounts payable, credit cash, so binawasan mo na. Pero hindi mo pa na-deliver yung check. Tama ba na binawasan mo yung cash? Ang answer, hindi. So, you need to add back the 100,000. Post-dated check. Pero hindi mo naman ni-record. So, wala namang naging mali. Kasi hindi mo naman na-record, hindi mo nabawasan yung cash. That's just correct. So, we just ignore this information. And lastly, yung 200,000 na na-collect during January 2021, but you recorded it on December 31. So, nasobrahan yung collections mo for December. Kasi January pa dapat yun. So, dapat you need to deduct it. So, to make a computation, so that's the cash and cash equivalents will be the demand deposits, 1,500,000 plus the certificate of deposit, 500,000 plus the petty cash fund, 10,000 pesos. The adjustments are, you need to add back the undelivered check but you recorded it on December 31, add 100,000 and you need to deduct The collections made during January 2021 but recorded on December 31, 200,000. So if you do all that, your cash and cash equivalence is 1,910,000 pesos. So that's um, our practice problem for cash and cash equivalence. So now we will proceed to the last topic for this video and that is petty cash fund. So tulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, yung petty cash fund, this is a fund for small expenses. So normally, ang humahawak ng petty cash fund ay yung petty cash custodian. So siya yung mahawak ng pera, siya rin yung nagbibigay ng pera if ever merong mga small expenses, at siya rin ang nag-a-account. So siya yung may accountability sa petty cash fund. So we will... Look at the journal entries that we do for petty cash fund. When you establish a petty cash fund, the entry is debit, petty cash fund, credit cash. So parang tinanggal mo sa cash tapos ililipat mo sa petty cash fund. Every time you disburse expenses, so kunwari nagbigay ng pera yung custodian sa, sa kung sino man yung humingi no, for small expenses, the entry is No entry. So, isusulat lang yan ni Petty Cash Custodian sa kanyang notebook kung um, kanino niya binigay, magkano, at para anong saang expenses. Ikikip niya yon along with the receipts kasi later on, i-replenish -re naman yung Petty Cash Fund kapag naubos na yung pera. So, habang nagdi-disburse, walang entry na gagawin. Because... Transactions are recorded in a petty cash register accompanied by vouchers na hawak ni petty cash custodian. At the end of the year, or kung kailan man nila gusto, if they will replenish the cash fund, the petty cash fund, the entry will be, you just debit all the various expenses and then i-credit mo yung cash. So, dito na na lumalabas yung record ng expenses. Tapos, i-credit mo cash. Ibig sabihin, yung petty cash fund na account, hindi gumalaw. Kasi yun yung expectation. Pag ni-replenish, babalik lang siya sa kanyang dating amount. So, that is your journal entry when you replenish. What if December 31 na, 
Tapos, hindi pa nag-replenish. So, kapag December 31 na, tapos hindi pa nag-replenish, you need to make a year-end adjusting entry. Your year-end adjusting entry will be debit, various expenses, and credit, petty cash fund. So, kasi hindi nag-replenish, kaya nabawasan yung petty cash fund. Hindi tayo magka-credit ng cash kasi hindi nga nag-replenish. This occurs when the petty cash fund is not replenished at year-end. This is to avoid the overstatement of the cash balance. Pag hindi mo ito ginawa, then sobra yung petty cash fund mo, tapos hindi ka nag-record ng mga expenses. What if you increase or decrease your fund? Then simple, if increase, debit petty cash fund, credit cash. Pag nag-decrease or nabawasan, debit cash, credit, petty cash fund. Okay? So those are your journal entries. What if merong shortage or overage? Kulang yung pera or sobra yung pera. If that is the case, the amount of replenishment is decreased by such overage in order to maintain the fixed balance of the fund. So, um, ina-adjust na lang natin yung replenishment. On the contrary, when there is a cash shortage, the amount of replenishment is increased by cash shortage. So, kapag kunwari, ang replenishment mo 10,000, tapos may shortage ka na 1,000. So, ang total na ire-replenish mo, 11. Kapag doon naman sa over, bawasan mo na lang yung ire-replenish mo. So, para maging fixed pa rin yung balance ng fund. So, let's have an example. So, as of December 31, 2020, the petty cash fund of Carmilla Company with a general ledger balance of 15,000 pesos comprises the following. So, ang petty cash fund niya daw, 15,000. Ngayon, eto yung mga laman ng drawer ni Custodian. Meron siyang coins and currencies, 2,550. Meron siyang petty cash vouchers. Gasoline for delivery equipment, 3,000. Medical supplies for employees, 2,040 pesos. Meron tayong mga IOUs or yung mga utang. Advances to employees, 2,220. A sheet of paper with names of several employees together with contribution to bereaved employee. Attached is a currency of 2,400. Although meron ganito, hindi to pera ng petty cash fund kasi ibibigay nila to sa isang employee na namatayan. So hindi yan um, kasali sa fund. Sa mga check naman, meron tayong check drawn to the order of the petty cash custodian. Normally, kapag may check eh, tapos ang pangalan doon ay yung petty cash custodian, ito yung replenishment, amounting to 3,000 pesos. And we have personal check drawn by the petty cash custodian, 2,400. Hindi to accountability ng petty cash fund kasi personal check. Okay, so... What is the entry to replenish the fund on December 31, 2020? So, if you take note, the actual cash na meron sa fund ngayon ay yung coins and currencies, 2,550, at saka yung check drawn to the order of custodian na 3,000. So, ang total lang talagang perang as of now is 5,550. Eh... Yung cash accountability or yung petty cash fund talaga is 15,000 pesos. Pagbawasan mo yung 5,550 na actual na binilang mong pera, ang replenishment dapat should be 9,450. So, yun ba ang mga expenses? Let's see. The amount of replenishment should be 9,450 but the legitimate expenses or receivables are the following. We have the gasoline na 3,000 pesos. Meron tayong medical supplies na 2,040. At saka meron tayong advances to employees na 2,220. Yung iba doon, hindi sila legitimate kasi yung isa ibibigay sa namatayan, yung isa personal check. So they are not uh, legitimate. So ito lang yung mga legitimate. Pag tinotal nyo yan, at minus nyo sa 9,450, ang shortage ay 2,190 pesos. So, meron tayong shortage. Meaning, what will happen? 
The journal entry is debit miscellaneous expenses, yung mga expenses mo na gasoline at medical supplies, 5,040. We have debit receivable from employees, yung advances sa kanila, 2,220. Meron tayong ire-record na debit, cash, short or over, kasi shortage, para siyang loss, na 2,190. Tapos, credit cash, 9,450 because that should be the amount of the replenishment. Okay? So, kung wala ng shortage, around 7,260 lang sana yung replenishment. Pero dahil uh, meron tayong shortage, kaya naging 9,000 yung ating replenishment. If nag-replenish tayo ng 9,450, then, babalik ulit sa 15,000 ang ating petty cash fund. So, that would be all for today, learners. We have discussed accounting for cash and cash equivalents, including the journal entries and accounting for petty cash fund. Now, it's your time to test your knowledge. If you know the answer to this question, you may comment your answer down below sa video na to, and I will reply kung tama yung naging solution mo or kung tama yung answer mo. So, this is the question. Queen Company had the following account balances on December 31, 2019. Petty cash fund, 50,000. Cash on hand, 500,000. Cash in bank, current account, 4 million. Cash in bank, payroll account, 1 million. Cash in bank, restricted account for plant addition expected to be disbursed in 2020, 500,000. Cash in sinking fund, set aside for bond payable June, June 30, 2020, 1,500,000. The Petty Cash Fund includes unreplenished December 2019 Petty Cash Expense Vouchers of 5,000 and employee IOUs of 5,000. The cash on hand includes a 100,000 check payable to Queen dated January 15, 2020. In exchange for a guaranteed line of credit, Queen has agreed to maintain a minimum balance of 200,000 in its unrestricted current bank account. What should be reported as cash and cash equivalents on December 31, 2019? A. 6,940,000 B. 6,740,000 C. 5,440,000 or D. 7,440,000. So, if you know the answer, just comment your answer down below. So, thank you very much. That would be all for today. Again, like, comment, and share this video. At pag hindi ka pa nakakasubscribe sa channel ko, please do subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell para updated ka kung meron akong mga bagong videos. You can also reach me sa aking mga social media accounts on Facebook, I am AJ Cresmundo, on Twitter, um, at AJ Cresmundo, and on YouTube, Sir AJ Cresmundo. So that would be all for today, guys. Again, if you have questions, you may message me sa aking mga social media accounts or if you have um, concerns, you can also message me there. So that would be all for today. Thank you very much, guys. See you on my next video. Bye!